Look, I'm not a royal correspondent. Just a lowly commoner commentator. Opinionator? I don't have the inside story of what's going on in the UK with King Charles or on the agenda of the doctors who are managing King Charles's cancer treatment. Buckingham Palace has been, or has attempted to be, open about the king's medical problems, and kudos to the king for talking about his prostate diagnosis and inspiring so many men to have their prostates checked. It's all about spreading information and impacting lives, and the king has done a great good thing. From what we know, the king's recent cancer diagnosis was given at an early date, meaning his cancer was caught early and thus his outcome is likely to be better than if the cancer had not been discovered and had had more time to grow. We know this even as we understand that treatment for cancer is almost invariably grueling and painful, and while we're not assured he'll be all right in the end, we have cause to think our collective prayers for the monarch will be answered. Some commentators have been saying that Harry's rush to return to his home means that Charles' prognosis is dire, more dire than the palace has reported at this time. And sadly, maybe that's the case. But here's the thing. I truly doubt Harry has the inside story any more than I do. Why would anyone trust Harry with the intimate details of the king's health when he has clearly proved himself to be so untrustworthy, when he has for years spilled private family stories, even some stories he and or Meghan make up out of whole cloth, to the highest bidder. Harry couldn't even keep his private conversation with his father about his cancer diagnosis to himself, instead briefing the press within an hour of receiving it and making his dramatic run to the airport to get on a plane and go to his ailing father's side. Hmm. Never mind that said ailing father gave the errant kid about half an hour before departing to his country home to recover, ostensibly from his first week of cancer treatment, but one has to wonder even more to recover from his first meeting in several months with his tiresome, whining son. As a cancer survivor myself, I can honestly say that when you're recovering from treatment, the last thing you need is another problem rushing in to confront you from 3,000 miles away. You need a comfortable bed where you can bundle up against the pain. A clean bathroom where you can puke in peace. Quiet people around you who understand the necessity of stability and serenity while you're doing the essentially solitary work of trying to save your own life. You know what Harry's dramatic flight to the UK reminds me of? Harry and Meghan's near-catastrophic car chase. Maybe this is what Harry and Meghan can claim as their talent. Making mountains out of molehills. Crying wolf. Trying to play a bunch of tiny violins and make them sound like an orchestral arrangement as the soundtrack for their grasping lives. For King Charles's sake, I hope I'm right about this latest attempt of Harry and Meghan's to draw attention to themselves, to make the King's cancer all about them. If you like what we're doing here at The Authentic, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment, which makes the algorithm very happy. Thank you for watching.